Hi everybody, it's Chris, back in the cider shed, slightly empty cider shed because I'm loading up for the market tomorrow, so I've taken a lot of stuff out. Um, got a new cider to try from a familiar producer, Ross on Y. I've done a lot of their stuff, but for good reason, they're excellent. And I got a new cheese as well, doing hammering through the cheeses at the moment. This one's quite different to anything we've done before, uh, but first off, let's have a look at the cider. So it's Ross on Y. Um, it says on there, you may be able to see, Two Belly, cheese and beer shop. So Two Belly are in Bristol. Uh, it's an excellent shop. I have sold cheese to them on many occasions. Up until quite recently, I phoned Dom there every Monday to ask him if he needed any cheese. And he quite often did, because they sell a lot of cheese because they do an excellent job. They also sell a lot of beer, but also a lot of cider. And they did a thing whereby they teamed up with the guys at Ross and Y and produced this particular cider. And it's something I'd quite like to do as well in the future. Um, I've sent an email to Albert stating that. Haven't had a response. It doesn't bode well, but, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. Um, nice blend as well. Major, Michelin and Dabonet. So Dabonet is a cracking um, variety that can be used by itself a lot. Um, Michelin is a great blending apple. Uh, originally from France, but actually been in England for over a century, like 150 years, one of the largest planted uh, varietals at one point, I believe, and Major, and the Major from these guys, the single variety Major, um, I love. It's the dry cider that got me into dry cider. So what a great blend. And it says 2017, 2018, wild ferment, um, or cask. So it's a blend of, you know, juices from different vintages, blah, blah, blah. Um, anything else on the bottle that I would like to add? Oh, here we are. Major Michelin and Dabonet. In July 2019, Lara and Dom, the cheese experts at Two Belly in Bristol, visited us for a day of blending. After several hours of hard work, we agreed on this blend. 2017 Major with 2018 Oak Cask fermented Michelin and Dabonet. It is smoky and smooth with a finish of acidity, spice and booze. A cider of supreme quality. Drink this whilst eating Sancerra cheese and be content. Well, I don't have any Sancerra. Sancerra is a little dinky washed-rined Cow's cheese made by a lady called Julie Cheney, who's an excellent lady and, and excellent cheesemaker. I have something else. It has a similar rind. It's, a, it's got a wrinkly Gior wine on it, a bit like Sancerra. But it is, in fact, French. And it is from the Loire. The Loire Valley. And the Loire Valley is best known for goat's cheese. It's the goat's capital of the world, really. And here we have some goat's cheese. What a beautiful little thing that is, that wrinkly rind. So it's got ash on it, which is causing that grey. But you can see that wrinkly stuff, that is geotrichum, baby. That is my favourite mould. As I said before, I'm allowed to have a favourite mould because I am a cheesemonger. That is the inside, the white paste. That gives it where the goat's cheese, that whiteness. See how it's breaking down under the rind? See that? So the, so the mould is actually breaking the cheese down and making it go softer, lowering the acidity. And you may notice a hole in the middle. What's that hole, Chris? I can hear you saying. I'll tell you what it is. So these cheeses um, have straws put through the middle of them when they're very, very young, uh, when they've just been made, in fact. Now, why they do this is an, not quite sure exactly. Well, no one's given me a definitive reason. I can come up with several. Firstly, these cheeses are quite fragile when they're young, so it helps the cheese hold its structure. Also, these cheeses, these moulds, very delicate. Very delicate. So actually you've got a piece of straw sticking out either, either end. When you have to turn the cheese, you can pick it up by the straw, turn the straw, and do that. You won't touch the rind, you'll cause it no damage whatsoever. I suspect it's those reasons, a combination thereof. And that's become the tradition. So if you see a goat's cheese in a log with a straw through the middle, it is a saint -Mau. Okay. Um, I love pure track and goat's cheeses. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to go with... You know this particular cider however um like i say you know if you've got something in this hand you love to eat and this and something in this hand you love to drink how bad a time can you actually be having so let's try it let's have a look at this okay let's do the cider first hold on my daughter appears to be on something hi dilly you all right I'm back. Right then, where was I? Uh, cider and cheese, that's right. So, I was about to open 
this bottle of cider. Weapon of choice. Nice. So, sparkling, as you can see. Uh, nice bit of sparkle in there. Quite nice fine bubbles. Not too fizzy though, that's good. Don't like that too much. Masks flavour when some things are too fizzy. Um, obviously, unfiltered. Obviously, um, wild ferment, so wild yeast. Everything we've come to expect from Ross and Rye. Okay. Let's have a look. Nice mousse on that. Uh, Colour is pale gold, I would say. Gold to pale gold. Where's my thingy? Here's my thingy. There you go. So you can see what I can see. How's that? Yeah? All right. Let's have a sniff. Cheers, Dom and Laura. And Albert and Mike. So, interesting nose, as always, from Ross and Rye. Really interesting nose, actually. I've got a bit of smokiness to start with. Definitely a, a kind of a fresh slash aged apple thing going on there. It's a bit of both. It smells fresh, but then you get an aged character to it, which I really like. Like my mum's shed, because she keeps apples in her shed, and when you walk in there, after being there for a few weeks, it's got this amazing smell. That's what I'm getting off this. They're yeah, kind of a rich smell, actually. Rich, round, slight baked character, possibly. A little bit of funk. But yeah, there's a slight smokiness. Plenty to think about. Plenty to think about. Really good nose. Really intriguing. Mix run drink it. Cheers. Mm. Yeah, this is nice. It's kind of what I expected as well. In a really good way. So I tried this once at Tea Belly, but I had this like a shot in a glass from a bottle that had already been opened, and I was doing other things, and I, I can't no recollection of what it tasted like. So this is this is this feels new to me, like the first time I've properly drank it. To be honest, <laughs> getting messages on my phone. Sorry if you can hear that. I've got to remember to turn off the volume. <laughs> it's not going very smoothly today. Never mind. Um, nice tannin on the teeth, squeakiness, sort of astringency in the mouth. Definitely bit of leatheriness in the back, so that's hard tannins in the back. Like it a lot, just a bit though, just a bit. So this is dry, but there's a definite rich fruitiness to it. Rounded aged apple fruit flavour, which isn't sweet, but you can always perceive it's sweet. And that leatheriness works really well with that. And the whole thing fills your palate, loads of structure. There's no hollowness on the mid palate. In fact, that's why I'm feeling that sort of rounded fruit flavour, if you like. Yeah. Tiny bit of a... Just a hint of acidity, which is good, because you'd need it. But it's there. So it's great. Um, almost a slight dairy quality to it as well. Just a milky creaminess in the background. Great cider. Really great cider. Good work, Dom. Good work, good work, Laura. Good work, Ross and Mai. Excellent. And when I saw those three varietals on there, I was thinking, if I was going to pick three varietals, there's a strong chance those are the three I would have picked. So, brilliant stuff. Really nice. Shall we try some cheese? Very quickly. Okay, so here is the, uh, the Wild Valley goat cheese I was talking about. So normally with goat cheese, I would say go for some with a bit of sweetness because actually things like honey is an obvious thing to have for them goat cheese honey and goat cheese is great figs as well uh, ripe pear um, but that's got the fruitiness to it actually which I think will work so here it is there's that hole I was talking about so you've seen through it mmm okay mmm great texture so this is a lactic cheese Without being too technical, that usually means the paste is quite friable and can be dry and flaky. This connotation, it's super buttery. I mean, it has got that friable, uh, sort of friability to it, but it's broken down brilliantly. The bit around the edge, 
that creamy, nutty, earthy character you get from the Dua Tracker. It's awesome. This is caught in my palate. In fact, the whole thing is incredibly delicious. It does have a goaty milk, a goat's milk sort of character to it. It's got mineral character to it as well. Super buttery though, like a nutty butter. Really good. That is a brilliant, brilliant Sam Moore. Really good. And I've let it warm up a bit, which is probably a good thing as well. Mm. And this and this, I'm spoiled rotten, I really am. Yeah, it works. It dries a bone, but it works. That little bit of bubble is scrubbing those fats. The fruitiness is working with that minerality. The salt in that is bang on the money. I mean, bang on. It is just there, but it is there. And if you didn't have it, it would be flavourless. Brilliant piece of cheese, uh, cheese making. Brilliant piece of cheese making. Fantastic cider making and cider blending. Excellent pairing. Really good. Okay, guys. Very happy boy. Okay, so I'll be back. I'll probably keep that bit of cheese. I might eat it all. If I don't, I'll keep it for the next day. Single we'll try out something else. That would be good, wouldn't it? Okay. I hope you got something from that. Sorry for all the interruptions. Uh, but I uh, hope to see you again soon. And until then, cheers.